Some days I just want to get away. Life is too complicated. I want to get in my wooden sailboat and sail away. That idea is nothing new. Hundreds of thousands of men in the 18th and early 19th century did exactly that same thing. And while they were able to get away from it all, they found themselves doing a job that was harder than imaginable. Every day I study the 18th and early 19th century. It's my job and I love it. For fun, I dig even deeper into shipboard life of this time period. The memoirs and books by the people who lived in the time period. Samuel Kelly, Spavins, Dana. These books are great and they give us a, a glimpse of what sailor's life is like in that time period from actual sailors, not from somebody from the outside. If I really want to have fun and what I do for fun is read and listen to the Patrick O'Brien novels, the Master and Commander series with Aubrey and Matron. You may know the Master and Commander movie. I love it. This common sailor's life is fascinating. What always amazes me is the work that these common sailors have to do. It is probably the most difficult and dangerous job in this time period, and it was done by hundreds of thousands of men. They are working before the age of steam. They've got nothing to propel these ships but sails and ropes. And these ships are very fragile, and they're putting them into the most dangerous circumstances on the earth, dealing with horrible storms, rocks you can't see. It's just incredible that anybody survives at all. And they do this over and over and over again every day of their lives. Sometimes it's the most monotonous thing ever and nothing happens. And then 10 minutes later, they're fighting for their lives, literally. Sometimes after a storm or maybe a battle or just before you're coming into a port, there are opportunities when the sailor has a chance to have a feast, to have a special meal. They may not have anything different than they've ever had uh, with their typical rations, but they do have an opportunity to combine things they normally wouldn't to make a special meal, to make a feast. That's what we're doing today. So the first dish for our hardworking and hungry sailors is going to be a peas pudding. Now, they're eating peas pudding at least once a week and sometimes every single day. But their peas pudding, this everyday peas pudding, is just these dried peas boiled in a bag. That's it, that's peas pudding, nothing special. Ours is going to be a little bit more special. We're gonna take our peas, we're gonna boil them for about a half hour or so, then we're gonna take them out of their bag we're gonna add some butter right into the middle of this clump and a bunch of salt and pepper. And then we're gonna close that back up and boil it some more, another half hour or so. And it's gonna make this wonderful infused flavor inside of this peas pudding, which is normally a very, very plain dish. They didn't get butter every day. They got butter maybe once a week. So this is special to be able to add pepper and salt and butter into this peas pudding. It's gonna give it a great flavor. This dish goes by a couple of different names. Peas pudding, of course, or dog's body, which the sailors more likely would have used. In Samuel Kelly's memoir, as an 18th century sailor, he speaks of peas pudding. He says, our daily food from month to month was only beef and peas pudding for dinner and for supper. One of the most important aspects of getting a ship ready for sea is provisioning. You have to have the supplies on board to feed all the men for the trip you're about to take, and probably times two, because you don't know how long your trip might take. Sometimes your average trip might take three or four weeks, and then another time of year, it might take four months. So you have to have lots and lots of provisions on board. What are the provisions? you're gonna have salt meat, so salt beef and salt pork. You're going to have lots and lots of sea bread or ship's biscuit, we know it today as hardtack. You'll even have a special room on board the ship, tin lined, so that the rats can't get in, that you store all this bread in. It's gotta stay dry. We also have other kinds of provisions. 
oatmeal, dried peas. We're going to have butter and cheese. So the dish I'm most excited about here is the main dish, lobscouse. It's got a fun name to it. It's one of those names that nobody's quite sure where it comes from, but it is classic lobscouse from the 18th century. The main component here in lobscouse is something like salt pork, which the sailors are eating a couple of days out of every single week. We're going to take some onion. Again, kind of a special treat for sailors. And we're gonna take that onion and brown it a little bit in a frying pan. I'm gonna to toss in potatoes. Again, a special treat for a sailor. We're gonna put in some diced up potato into these onions. Once it's cooked up, can go into our pot. A pot of water with some chopped up salt pork in it. If we're using salt pork, we wanna start off with the water cold. If we were making our lobscouse with fresh pork, well, we'd put those pork pieces in with those onions and brown them toss them into the hot water already boiling. We're gonna let those boil a half hour or so, maybe a little bit longer, and then comes the extra special part of lobscouse. And that is ship's biscuits. Ship's biscuits are the thing that sailors get each and every day. Almost a pound of ship's biscuits each and every day. And ship's biscuits are almost inedible in the state that you would get them. These are just flour and salt, a little bit of water. You knead them up into these hard little biscuit shapes and they get baked at a very low temperature for a very long time. You're driving out all the moisture. They last a long time. They do go bad and bugs and weevils find their way into them, but the sailor's gonna eat them anyway. The ship's biscuit is going to thicken and add texture to our lobscouse. Right now it's just a soup, but this will go in and give it a real stew texture. The small parts just thicken it, the bigger parts will stay nice and chunky. They'll add to it. They'll make it seem like we have twice as much meat as what's really in here. We find lobscouse showing up in dictionaries and literary works in the 18th and 19th century. And we never find it in a cookbook. You're not gonna find it there because sailors aren't writing down their recipes. But the dictionary reference here in the Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue from 1788 gives us a quick snapshot. What is lobscouse? It says, a dish much eaten at sea, composed of salt beef, biscuit and onions well peppered and stewed together. These two main dishes are ready. The dog's body, peas pudding, and the lobscouse. And let's give this just a little try. This is not something I eat every day, that's for sure. But you can tell this one's special with that buttery flavor and the salt and pepper infused in it. This is what I really wanna make sure to test. This is the lobscouse. Oh, that's so good. This is gonna be completely different than what a sailor gets each and every day. A different texture, it's got a, a different mixture of things all put together, cooked in a way that they're, you, know, you don't get every day. This is really, really good. We've got our vegetables, we have our meat, our protein, but we need dessert, we need to set this off. So we're gonna make the sailors delight. They called it plum duff. It is a boiled pudding made with flour, sometimes with suet or with slush from the ship's galley, and the sweetness, raisins. They would have pounds and pounds of raisins just for this dish. There are truly some harrowing stories from this time period written by the sailors themselves. In Dana's Two Years Before the Mast, he talks about coming around Cape Horn and just how incredibly difficult it was having to run up on deck in the middle of the night. You don't know exactly when. You haven't slept more than four hours no matter what. The decks are icy. You have to climb icy rope ladders 100 feet above the deck and bring in a sail that's as hard as a board because it's frozen solid. Again, without a single light to see by in the middle of the night. 
And then you have to come down on deck. And is there anything to eat? Well, if the weather's been really bad, you can't light the galley fires. So there's no warm food. I can't even imagine it. For a meal, we have to have a drink. What did the sailors want? They wanted grog. In home waters, they got a gallon of beer a day, but that wasn't what they really wanted. Once they were out of home waters, they got grog, which was rum mixed with water, three to one. That's the drink they wanted. It's the drink we're gonna have for our feast. These men were not well paid. They were drawn from the lower classes, and yet they were asked to do an impossible job, probably the most dangerous and difficult job of the time period. And without them, we would have no 13 colonies. We wouldn't have overseas commerce in any shape or form. The world would look completely different and much, much poorer. This is a wonderful feast. Our sailors are going to love this. It makes me want to buy a ship.